the first type is like the auto-generated uh, type, which is they are generated by the runtime. Uh, basically, uh, the, the GN knows uh, what process variables we have or what task that assignment we have. And basically, it can generate a form out of the box, uh, choosing the right form controls for those uh, for the data types. And then the user can use it. And then on the other side, we have the, the forms that are built by customers. Let's say that these are like the two types of forms that we are more or less used to support. Yeah. Uh, we have the I have the form generation in the uh, form generation CLI in this uh, in this project. Okay, uh, basically there are going to be distributions uh, in for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. I'm using the Linux one. Okay, and what this CLI is going to do basically is going to first ask us ask uh, for the path to a Gojita project. This CLI knows how to search for the JSON schema that the runtime is gener generates on every build. So right now, because I'm inside of the project folders, I can just uh, use the point the dot here. Now it lets you select what is the uh, type of form we want to generate. So the pattern fly forms, the output of these forms are going to be React. Pattern fly provides a good set of React components. Uh, and we thought that it was a good idea to just go ahead and use React for those forms. So we can take advantage of those cool widgets they have. And for Bootstrap, yeah, it's going to be just a plain HTML, uh, plain HTML with from JavaScript and CSS. Now you are going to see how it looks like. So launching the form CLI, the form CLI, it's going to ask us for some confirmation. And yeah, you saw it found two schemas basically for the two tasks that the process has. Uh, hiring interview, sorry, the hiring HR interview and the hiring IT interview. Basically, the, this name refers to, as you can guess, the first part is the, the process name and the second is the second part is the name of the task. So basically, we are uh, chaining the, the process name and the task name to identify the form. So this is the kind of ID that we are going to use internally. So right now, if I go to my Cogito, to my Cogito project, uh, I'm going to just uh, close everything you will see that in the resources folder, we have a forms folder, which is new added. And you'll see that we have a set of files here, okay? Basically, for each form, we have two files. One of them is the HTML1. Uh, in this case, because we are bootstrap, we are generating the HTML1, just repeating one more time. Uh, this uh, HTML file basically contains, you see, it's basically the same as we saw in the screen. And we are basically all the fields, but, we are also adding some JavaScript utility functions and some APIs that we can use during the form, let's say, life cycle, okay? The first method that we have here is the set form data, okay? Uh, basically, what we are doing here is we are, the, this method, what it's going to do is receive some data from the runtime. Uh, uh, later, I'm going to show you how it's going to work, but uh, this data is going to come from the runtime and basically it's going to fill in the, the form controls with that data. Then we have the get form data method, which basically uh, it generates the output of the form. Based on the output of the task, we know what uh, what we should be posting on the form. So basically, it takes the data from the inputs and generates the JSON, basically the, the payload in a JSON object uh, that we can just post into a runtime. Then we have uh, uh, this is an empty method, but probably we, are, we may consider having some code here uh, added in the future. This is a validate method. This is going to be used for validation, okay? Here you can put your custom validations and here you can basically uh, basically uh, interrupt the submission of the form. If you throw an error here, uh, the submit of the form will, will stop and the user will basically stay in the screen 